It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. With me in the KFG studios, two of my favorite people in the world. And I'm, I mean that, not just because they're right in front of me. My <laughs> business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Yeah, so my big question today, Mike, is can you buy a house using your 401k? Or what about your IRA? And even if you can, is it a wise move? Pun boom, intended. Boom, boom. We're covering this question and more on this week's episode. Hey, these are actually, it's, this topic is inspired from a couple fans of the show who, gosh, within just a short time of each other, maybe they were in cahoots. I, don't, I doubt it. Uh, asked a question about, hey, can I do this? And so we love when you reach out and, and ask questions. So we're here for you. You can call or text us, 574-222-2000. That's 574 574- 222-2000 with your questions or any needs you have. You can also go online, wisemoneyshow.com, and submit a question right there on the right. And then all over social media, that's where we get most te- uh, questions. Uh, just search the Wise Money Show, follow us there. Okay, so it, to me, it's it's not a surprise. The housing market's absolutely surging. I don't have the data in front of me, but uh, on average, like the index is up 10, 11% year over year. And I think that's even before like you know you got to be careful with these year over year numbers right now because you're comparing stuff to last April and May right which garbage, was an anomaly right, right? garbage but I, I think I think this up 10 or 11 percent was like February to February so before pandemic hmm. the housing market is just surging you've heard some ridiculous stories about going way above ask and bidding wars and all. Right. and so to me it's not coincidental that uh, uh, over the weekend, and then on Monday, I received questions from fans of the show that basically said, can I use my retirement accounts to help buy myself a house? Mm-hmm. And so we're going to hit those specific questions from you in just a moment. But I just want to throw that idea open. I mean, can you use your 401k to buy a house? What about an IRA? And then even if you can, should you do that? So let's let's start in general. Just to clarify, are these folks who are wanting to buy a house to live in, are they looking at rental properties? Let's, Did they give that kind of detail? They didn't, and we're actually going to hit their questions. I'll read them to you here on the air in just a moment. But let's let's assume for your own personal residence. Mm-hmm. I believe that was the context. So let's let's start there. Yeah, so you know the the idea of using your retirement plan and you said specifically the 401k um you know, the, the, the rule book would say that there's a few ways that you can get money out of that 401k. One is you, you reach retirement age and you start drawing off of it and you pay your taxes at that time. And, and we actually kind of get a lot of those questions from clients sometimes. They, they get to the end of their working career and maybe they still have a mortgage or they want to buy a second house or something. And the, the question says, hey, sh- can I or should I yank a bunch of money out of my retirement accounts and just pay the taxes and then and buy this house or pay off this loan or whatever. And that becomes a tax planning question that we can get into in just a moment. But that's one way is you just take a distribution when the time comes. But if, if you're a first time home buyer and you're younger, the, the other option is taking a loan against your 401k. Yeah. And it's a way for you to get some liquid cash, um, you know, out, out of these retirement accounts. But the, the tough part is, you're limited in how much you can pull. You, you can take 50% of the balance up to $50,000. So it's not enough to just buy the house, but if this is a way to try to get down payment, you know, so someone's maybe trying to get creative on how to be ready to buy a house in this very competitive world, it seems. I, I feel like what's most likely is, okay, I got pre-approved. I can do a down payment on this size house, but I have to pay above ask oh. with a K and uh, I will <laughs> not, the, the, the mortgage, the, the bank will not appraise or, or the, it will not appraise at the level I have to pay. And therefore I've got to bring more money to the table. Where do I get that money from? I can't borrow it from the bank yeah. because the house won't appraise. Here's the thing. 
Uh, can you take it from a 401k? If it's your 401k and you're working, can you just take the money? Now there's rules against it, right? right. And and uh, we're going to talk about it here in just a second. There is a special exception for first-time home buyers, quote unquote, not for 401ks the way I understand it. Right. Works for IRAs. We'll talk about that in just a second, but not for 401ks. So um, could you get a hardship withdrawal from a 401k? I, I mean, you prove buying a house is a hardship? So, so I think the option would be a loan from a 401k if your plan allows it. Not all of them do. Yeah, and I, th- I think to Josh's point, if, I, if it's my first home, it's likely I don't have 100000 in into my 401k that I could borrow fifty out of it. Right. So to me, this is a scenario where it, it likely is not my first home that I'm, mm-hmm. I, I'm using my 401k to do this. And I think that could beg the question, well, it does it make sense to ever borrow money out of my 401k? And I think, I think it, personally, I think it can. Yeah. I personally have used the 401k loan as a tool. If you use the 401k loan to get money out to go take your family to Disney or for lifestyle type stuff, probably not a great idea. But if you're using the 401k loan to improve your balance sheet or change things. And again, the only thing is we're, it's a little bit of a f- kind of frothy kind of a melt up right now. If And I'd say if you absolutely have to buy a house right now, buy a house right now. If you don't absolutely have to buy a house right now, then I, I'd be tempted to not be. I had, a, I had a client in my office yesterday and he was talking about how he can't believe how the values at, at, in their place down in Florida, in their little community there, have changed and increased. And he said the, the, the guy next to him sold his place for $600,000, which is um, finally back to what he paid for it in 2003. Oh, oh geez. And I'm saying, okay, well, here's the thing. Do do you want to buy something and wait 18 years for it to be worth that again? Hmm. And that's I'm not saying that's probable, but that's possible right now. If so, buy gold instead of house. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so a 401k. Yes. No, I think before you move off of that, I think you could probably buy gold 18 years from now for what you're paying for it today. I think you could probably build a house with gold and that would be cheaper than lumber. <laughs> right? So maybe maybe we all turn into King Solomon here. <laughs> That's the plan. Uh, so can can you can you use your 401k to buy a house? I mean, if it allows a, for a loan and if you've got enough balance, then it might help you with a down payment. There are some challenges with the 401k loan though. When you take that loan out, it's not taxable to you. So let's get that out uh, out of the way right right now. I mean, the four hundred one k loan is not taxable. Great, but that money is now not invested. It's out, it's out right. of your account. And so you know, if the stock market crashes, you are betting on that. Well, okay, great. But the stock market advances, or let's take the most recent scenario: goes straight down, and then trillions upon trillions of dollars are printed to force it to go back up. Then you missed out. Your contributions um, many times are halted and they go directed to repaying your loan. Many times. For, for you to decide quite often. Right. You, if you could afford to keep on contributing and paying back the loan at the same time, that's quite a hit to your cash flow. But if you're also at the same time taking on a new mortgage and trying to deal with a new expense structure in your life, that may not be sustainable for you. And it might create, even though the loan itself is not taxable, it might create some tax challenges for you because you don't have as much as much money going in. Therefore, you've got fewer tax deductions. So that's the 401k loan. And you might say, well, wait a second. I thought there were different rules last year. I know what they were. They changed them all the stinking time. That's the 401k. The IRA is a different story. Okay, so we're going to talk about those details and then should you do this? That and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hey, YouTube, thanks for being here. You're at the Wise Money Show uh, channel. This is the Wise Money Show, our one hour talk show that airs right here on this channel every Saturday at 10 a.m. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. 
turn on notifications. And if you like the content, like the content, smash that thumbs up button. If an hour long program is not your thing, well, listen faster, right? <laughs> listen at faster speed or check out the additional content that we drop all throughout the week. Our next Y Step video is more palatable, nine, 11, 10 minutes, taking a financial concept inflation's going crazy and what's going on with lumber prices and should you do a Roth conversion, those sorts of things, applying it directly to your financial life. So if that sounds like something you're into, making wise financial decisions, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you're made aware every time we drop new content. I feel like I'm yelling today. Maybe right. I'm just animated from our earlier Jan from our pep talk. <laughs> Janet? Uh, Janet yelling? Yeah. No. What speed do you listen to YouTube at? I <laughs> you slow it down. Listen, <laughs> so you can take. It depends. Notes. It depends. <laughs> I listen at one. One. It, so, it, yeah. it, it depends on the speaker. Who, yeah. So if Jordan Peterson, the the way he talks, I can only listen to him at one, mm -hmm. and it, it it irritates me if I go faster. He but, uses big words. Yep, but like <laughs> the fishing shows and the hunting shows, they're all two point oh, because mm. <laughs> I can I can pick up what they're saying. Uh, most of us. Outdoorsmen, we're slow talkers anyway, because uh, we're happy. <laughs> when, when, have when you? I'm watching uh, videos about farming techniques. Yes. I listen at three times speed. Yeah, you you <laughs> could you could speed that up, speed that stuff up. Um, but I it, usually listen at two times, and I have to listen to it twice. <laughs> I listen to I listen to the um, Wise Money Minute, uh, which is also commonly referred to as the Next Wise Step videos. I listen to those at one point five. Oh, all right. I can I can pick up what Mike's putting down at one point five. We've we've had some feedback saying because there's three of us on the program that uh, each each person needs their own separate speed. <laughs> Maybe we can install that into these microphones. Oh, that would be good. That's coming. <laughs> that, yeah, that is. That, we're, we're not far off from that. I I do think we have to. We're. It feels like we're answering. Should is a is the four one k loan for a house a good idea? And we're trying to come up with a yes or no answer with a. With it, hey, you're asking the wrong question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, hey, that's that's what we're hitting right now. Yeah, quit, quit swatting the flies. Get the garbage out of the house. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, did you just come up with that? <laughs> did you hear that at 1.5 speed somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> quit swatting the flies. Get the garbage out of the house. <laughs> yep, that does sound familiar. <laughs> hey, and go ahead if you're looking if you're listening on YouTube. Go ahead and leave your comments below. Especially if uh, Mr. Vladimir Vushkashki oh, has yeah. helped you with uh, yes. Bitcoin and made you 24,000 pounds. Yeah, it's just it, all unless. sorts of... It, it's, <coughs> it's, co it's, it's covert advertising. You get these these machines, they go in and right. they... The bots. The bots put a comment on your YouTube stuff and it's you know it seems normal at first and then they start talking about how Charlie whatever has a great trading strategy and... And then someone replies to it, oh, yeah, it helped me. And, oh, yeah, it helped me. And, oh, I made yeah. $4,500 uh, yesterday with his trading strategy. Yes, this was uh, good. Do you have his contact information? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. I, I saw it in a, uh, on a bathroom stall when I was driving through New Mexico. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. Good. We're, someone put too many coins in us today, I think. We're just a little amped up. Here we go. All right, so can, can you use your IRA to buy a house? But Kevin posed the more important question, and, and it's not can, it's should, and how do you know? What's the process you take to know whether you should do something like this or not? And so that's what we're hitting right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. A lot of laughter right there on the break. So go go check that out. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, follow us there. Okay, so we got several questions from fans of the show. Can I use my retirement account, my 401k, to buy a house? And, and I think it's because of surging prices. Can you use 401k? It, you could take a 401k loan if it's allowed. I, before well, not before. So, Kevin, you can take this wherever you want. I think we also need to answer the objective question, can you take it from an IRA? But there's bigger, there's there's more fish to fry yeah, here. Yeah, so, I mean, because to me, I'm thinking in, in, in process terms, like what should be done in this financial decision? And if you don't do these things, you owe you an apology. Like you owe your financial situation 
and if you're married, your spouse, an apology. Because the, there's a difference between me having $50,000 in a savings account in the bank and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to put this in as a down payment. That's that's one approach. But what's what are the payments that I have to make if I take $50,000 sitting in the bank and put it into now into the form of a house? I don't have to keep making payments on that. I guess that's a done deal. If I take money out of my 401k, I just change my cash flow. Big time. And yep. so, and so now, but I can stretch that over thirty years, right? You can, you you definitely, if you're buying it for a principal residence, mm-hmm. um, and I mean, so I mean, who knows if you're even a, employed by a school system? But if you're buying it for your principal residence, <laughs> you can stretch it beyond the five year mark. Yeah, where, where I was going, I was baiting, I was I was teeing Kevin up. Most four hundred one k loans, it's five year payback. And, right. Uh, wait, can I do six? No, five. That's it. Um, so, so just do the math real quick. Think about this. I borrow fifty thousand dollars for five years. It's eight hundred dollars a month. That's my that's my payment back. You are a wizard. You don't do math on the radio. You pulled that out of thin air. Um, wow, Kevin. The air is very it's thin. It's coming right out of your paycheck every two weeks or however yep. often. And- so, if it came out every two weeks, it'd be four hundred dollars a paycheck. But. If you're <laughs> okay, that was good. I'm okay. here to help. <laughs> so that's really good math there. And but if you if if it's for your principal residence, then for then you can't extend you can, it yeah. longer, and that's fine. And again, this is where it, it's a simple idea. Here's where it's not simple. Yes, okay. So pretend I have it as a ten or fifteen or twenty year loan out of my four hundred one k. Am I going to be there? Am I going to be at that place for the next 10, 15, 20 years? If the answer that is employer, you're saying, at that employer, not just that house. Exa- well, it, it, sure, at that employer, uh, for sure, could be at the house because th- this is where you have uh, this decision tree where you say, "I'm not going to be at that employer for you know, I, I, I'm going to, I'm not going to be there more than five years. What do I do?" Well, the next thing I'm looking at is, is there a provision in my 401k plan document that allows me to pay back the loan? After I'm gone. Yeah. All right, we're, let's let's jump off the 401k and go to the IRA before we answer the real question. So you might say, okay, well, geez, I, I don't have that much money in my 401k. They're talking about this loan, so I can probably take a loan from my IRA. No, you can't. There's no loans from an IRA. Okay, well, geez, then I can't access my IRA. No, you can, I, and that's the thing. You can you can take money out of your IRA for you know whenever for whatever at any time doesn't really matter. The question is. What are the taxes? And anytime you're taking money out of your IRA, it's going to be taxable on your tax return. Um, and if you pay state tax, it would be taxed there as well. But is there a 10% penalty? And yeah, if you don't meet certain qualifications, the one that everyone knows is age 59 and a half because we still celebrate half birthdays around here. Um, <laughs> the other, the other there, there's a bunch of other reasons. One of them is you can take $10,000 as a first time home buyer. Okay, ten thousand dollars. It's still taxable out of your IRA. There's just no penalty. All right. Well, what's a first time home buyer? Well, it's it's somebody who hasn't bought a house in the past two years. Hasn't right? owned a house in two years. Yes, owned a house. That's better said. Right. And and if you're married, that applies to to both of you. So you can't you know don't say well I'm going to put this in my name and then my spouse will buy the other one. <laughs> and by the way, that ten grand though is per person. So if you and your spouse have IRAs, you can each take ten grand. You know what else? Not only could you qualify as uh, if you haven't owned a house in the past two years, you could actually draw this money out and give it to your kids if they qualify. I did not know that, guys. I did not. And I'm looking at it in black and white on the interesting in, on the internet. So if you're going to help them with a down payment, you're saying? Correct. They've got to then okay, they haven't owned a house in the past 2 years. You could pull it out of your account, pay the taxes and gift it to them. Um I actually don't even know what code you'd use. You probably would code that as still a first-time home buyer and then if you're audited, you got to say you got to prove the money trail there. Um but I I, hmm. I always thought it was just yours. But saw that in in, in the uh, research there. So so the IRA is possible. Only ten grand ten grand is not going to go very far. And well, by especially the way, because you got to pay tax on it, right? right. So if you're in the twenty two percent tax bracket, you're going to lose twenty two hundred dollars to the tax man potentially, or you got to come up with that tax somewhere plus the state tax. So is is the irony lost on any of us that we're talking about taking dollars that were purposed for a certain? Uh, objective and repurposing those dollars. 
The yeah. it feels to me, and I could be wrong. The only reason why we're talking about this is because of the current economic conditions. I agree. And so I'm I'm tempted to say it's just stop the madness. Like, wait a minute, just halt the presses. Now, you might be listening to this and say, I can't halt the presses. I have I have a spouse and children, and we need a place to live. Mm-hmm. And so I, I get it. So I'm not, I'm not trying to sound callous or uncaring, but really at, at this point in time, because if you think about it, you're like, well, hey, I'll just yank the money out of my IRA. I'll pay the taxes, pay the penalty. Okay, look, if you're... If you were in the 12% tax bracket, that might put you into the 22% tax bracket federally. So 22% mm-hmm. federal, 5% state, that gets me to 27 plus 10%. So now I'm at 37%. And you say, well, hey, if there's a place or a way that I can borrow it, I'm assuming the interest rate on whatever I'm borrowing is less than that 37 Percent now, it's not perfect math. I know, I know, and, and I'm and you're not even supposed to do math on the radio. But you, I, all I'm saying is not for you. Th- that is wizard. that is expensive. That mm-hmm. you, that hundred uh, grand leaves me with sixty three grand in my pocket after I paid the taxes on it. There he goes mm-hmm. with that math again. So this is this is where I'm like, don't, don't you know? It, it, this is again. This it it appears as though it's a four hundred one k question or an IRA question, it's a financial planning question. That's sure. that's yep. exactly right. And and you know, part of that question is do you need to buy right now or should you just see if things can cool off? And say you need to buy or you just have a strong desire and you say I, I want to and can I afford it? Then it's a financial planning question to say where are your options? How should you structure the down payment? Where could it come from? How do you structure the loan? Do you do 15 year, 30 year, that sort of stuff? Th- that is the point of financial planning, right? Yeah. To help you discover not only what are all your options, but which one is the best amongst these options. Because if you're going to a 401k loan or yanking money out of an IRA to try to figure out some way to cobble together the financing for this, you're applying lots of creativity here. Maybe there are other options that you could use that same creativity to uncover. I mean, and that, that's, the, that's the job of your certified financial planner. Yeah, I found in my own life a need and a strong want look remarkably similar. <laughs> yeah, and they feel remarkably similar as well. I mean, you, you, can, can, you can confuse the two easily. And, and I, I, I think we probably overlook that value that a certified financial planner brings a lot. An objective, yes. objective third view right? A perspective that is less emotional, just wants you to win. We've got these specific questions and answers coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Good stuff. Every time someone says the word yanking, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you're going to say you're... Yeah. I, like I almost was like, guys, this is don't, don't say it. <laughs> I couldn't take get... a distribution. Is that better? <laughs> That's better because it, it it feels like it couldn't get any yeah. hotter in here. <laughs> so I see what you did there. Okay. All right, short break. Let's let's get into the questions. Okay, the questions are there on the outline. So we're in in um, in reality we're segment three, starting segment three, but the questions listed there in segment two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is this, it looks like there's only one question. And then in segment three. No, that's what I'm saying. In segment three, there's only one question. Correct. We are starting <laughs> segment three, and and but look at the question in segment two. <laughs> okay. Maybe I need to adjust my glasses. All right. There's one question listed. I got you. Two. Okay. Yep. Okay, okay, gotcha. Let's look at the. He front. can do. Hey, he can do math on the radio, and I can't. Let's. <laughs> hey, yo. Okay, so let's do, <laughs> let's do the questions in segment three. There's one question. Okay, <laughs> lead us. We <laughs> lead us. We're, we're blindly following you, Mike. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Um. Should you repurpose dollars? Is it wise? to take some dollars that were originally earmarked for retirement, and even with some tax benefits, if you use them for retirement and use them to help 
compete or keep up with the surging housing market to help you buy a house. Ooh, got a couple questions from fans of the show. We're hitting that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. And with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Follow us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there. Search the Wise Money Show. All right, we've, we've been talking all around it and what the rules are for withdrawing, taking money from your 401k to buy a house. You know, okay, let, let me just quick take a quick tangent. Sometimes, sometimes people look and say, well, I want to use my 401k or retirement account to invest in real estate and do a self-directed IRA. You can do that. There are just lots of fees. And then there are some very strict rules because you cannot receive any benefit So you can't buy your own house with your IRA or Roth IRA, and there's probably going to be someone online that says, yes, you can, I did it. Eh." (laughs) You're not supposed to have any benefit. So living there would be a benefit, okay? But but buying a rental house or whatever, well, you can't really have any benefit from it. And so you've got to be very careful with these rules. It's very expensive. We're not necessarily talking about that. We're talking about drawing money out of your 401k or your IRA to buy your own house or to make a down payment on a house that you're moving into. And uh, we've talked about those rules. Let's now get into the application. The first question that we have, okay, so here, here's what it was. I'm 60 years old, I'm, I'm a single female in Arizona, and I wanna use my 401k and Roth 401k to purchase my first home in Texas when I retire in five to seven years. So follow that. I, not looking to buy the house immediately. I'm looking to buy the house in five to seven years. It will only be funded with about a hundred and twenty thousand to one hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan by then. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Should I get a Roth IRA open and start moving the money there, um, or leave it there and fund the house from the 401k? You guys tracking that? You guys following that? I'm I'm a little confused. But. Okay, so just 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 summarize that question. The executive summary of the question is: You're 60, and you think you're going to retire and <clears throat> move to Texas in five to seven years. When you do, you're going to want to buy something, which suggests that you might not have equity right now right. In, in something. And so, what? Where's the best place to have the money to do so? I think that great summary. Okay, so and my, you know, I I, I wish this question was coming in the context of an actual appointment where you can have dialogue on this. But one of the clarifying questions, I guess, that I would have is, um, are you building up this pool of money specifically for the house? And you're just wanting to know, okay, what's the best way to get the money out? Or is this your entire retirement nest egg? And you're talking about using some portion of it to get into a house at retirement. Because if, if you're at, it, it says it'll be funded with about 120,000, 150,000 by then, that's the projected amount in the 401k. Mm-hmm. So, you know, retiring, if, if that was all the money that you had um, accumulated in your nest egg at retirement and you're wanting to use all or, or a portion of it, the, the risk is, is that you're maybe depleting the resources that you need to last you all the way through retirement for this upfront purchase at that time. I got a different... So the, the should you question... It has to be the first one. Mm-hmm. The The mechanics, though, of getting money out of a Roth IRA, part, part of the reason why some people accumulate a lot of money into a Roth 401k or Roth IRA is because they know it's a pool of money that they can access tax-free at retirement and, and pull a whole bunch of money out all at once and make a major purchase like this. So if that's your plan, and, and these are not resources that you need to live off of, then I, I think the, the heart of your question is, should you start funding a Roth IRA today to get your five-year clock ticking? Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Be- because if you're going to roll over your Roth 401k to a Roth IRA and, and maybe consider accessing it when you're shopping for a house and everything, you at least get the five-year clock ticking before you get to retirement. That's one detail that everyone needs to always remember make sure you're contributing to a Roth before you get to retirement. Just have a Roth open. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so I would tell you to do that. If you don't have a Roth IRA open, I would do that. But I, I, I'm going to take a different perspective. But Kevin, go ahead. Well, I agree with Josh. The first thing that, that you should do is consult your finan- with your financial Absolutely. advisor. Because <laughs> yes. um, it, this, this is a, a planning question. Now, 
Opening the Roth IRA, for sure, do that if you don't already have one. And be aware that likely in, with your plan, you have access to those dollars now that you're over 59 and a half. So you may want to take them out of the 401k and move them into an IRA. If you move, if you do that, you have you have access and there are, there are accessibility options in an IRA that you wouldn't have if it was in a 401k. There are rules about money coming out of the 401k and withholdings and things like this that don't exist on an IRA. So you may want to consider, hey, is accumulating in the 401k over the next five to seven years the very best place for you to accumulate that money? Yeah. Be- and, and the other thing that I would say is just be careful about FOMO. Because fear of missing out right now, if you're looking and all of these tech companies are moving from California to Texas and filling up places like Austin and Dallas and Houston, uh, I, I don't know where you're looking you know, deep in the heart of Texas, but this, th- this could get really expensive and you could be looking and saying, oh, oh no, um, the, it, it, I'm getting priced out of my dream. And so I need to do something rash today. And you could be that person that buys in and it's worth, your house is worth what you paid for it again 18 years from now. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I think that's a risk. The, the question being framed that you'll buy in five to seven years helped me think that you're, you're, you're not going there. I, it, let, me, let me take a different approach here. Um, you, you know, I, okay, I've got some dollars. I'm saving up for retirement, and I've got some other dollars. I'm saving up for a down payment. I'm saving up for the house. I can take those other dollars and save them in a savings account, or I can take those dollars and save them into a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA where I can draw the money out tax-free but or, or, or without tax, but at least the earnings would be growing tax-free. Right. Here's my question. I I, I think that's a potential uh, way that she framed that, that, that this question was, um, was worded and that's what she meant. Um, I, I don't, I wouldn't disagree with that idea, except how should you invest money that you're going to use in five to seven years, Mm -hmm. low risk. Mm -hmm. And therefore if the benefit on the Roth IRA is tax is, is the growth is tax free. Should you even have this money positioned for growth? With where multiple, okay, with what the Fed is doing and what the government is doing, very, very likely we see the market higher five to seven years from now. If you go back in history, there are plenty of times where the market's lower five years later, okay? Um, And when you look at just valuations, don't argue with me about, well, why these valuations and you could blah, 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 and Bitcoin and blah, 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 right? If you just look at valuations today, you would say, actually, in five years, there's a decent chance the market's not higher today or higher at that point. So I would be careful, even though I can see that reasoning. Well, listen, if I, if I can contribute more to the Roth and I can draw it out without a tax consequence when I need it, why would I save up in a savings account when I can just save it into the Roth and have the growth tax free? Just be careful how much growth, right? Is there any anything you look like you were going to add something that I? No, I, I think it makes sense that you know you're paying attention to how much are you putting at risk right. over the next five to seven years, and I, I think that's a good perspective. But you got to work with your certified financial planner on this. This is a financial planning question, and then determining how much risk you should take with these dollars that also needs to be made in the context of your overall financial plan. Got another question here about whether to use some 401k dollars to buy a house. I got that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hmm. Yeah, even while I was reading it, I was like, I I don't understand this question. So that summary was helpful, Kevin. All right, so this next one, now we are in segment four, but on the outline, we're looking at segment three. And we'll hit that question. We got 13 minutes, so we got that question. Then we got, I've got the other ones queued up here. Okay. I think, Let's I do think it. Garrett's question will t- take the rest of the segment after we do this first one. So, is that uh, the one in segment three? No, Garrett's question is in the online question bank. Okay, so 
We're going to start with the question in question in segment three. Okay. Yep. And so that that question is from James. Is it? Yes. Okay. Jimmy. His friends call him Jimmy. <laughs> okay. There's, who knows how these names are changed? His friends Jimbo. probably call him Robert. <clears throat> Jimbo. Yep. All right. Here we go. Thanks for being with us today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you listen to podcasts, well, guess what? You can listen to the Wise Money Show on podcast. Wherever you listen to podcasts, go check it out. And while you're there, do me a favor, rate the show. Give us a, you know, guy, say give us a five-star rating. Give us an honest rating. Give us some feedback. We appreciate that. All right, we're into uh, questions from fans of the show, and it just turned out we got a, a plethora, can't spell that, but I can pronounce it, of questions about can I use my retirement account to buy a house? And here's the, we've been tackling that one for a good part of this morning. Here's, here's the next question related to that from James. If I pulled my 401k early and I used the money to put a down payment on a house, are there any tricks or things of that nature. We had to pay over five grand this year, and that doesn't sit well with me. Anything will help. So, okay, so I, there's a little more to the story there. I, I'm not I'm not sure. Pay over 5,000 of what? Uh, I, I mean, taxes, could, could rent, be, could be interest. Tired of renting? Yeah, I, could I be taxes. Know. I got, I guess I read that as taxes. Could be. Yeah. Well, so so the key word here, I guess, is pulling the money out of the 401k early. Yeah. And um, it, whenever I hear the word early, as it relates to retirement, my mind goes to early withdrawal penalties. So, you know, get, getting taxed extra, you know, you already you're going to pay the, the income taxes by drawing money out of this tax deferred account. But then when they start tacking an additional 10% on top, that's where it gets especially painful. And it's it's hard to imagine where that is the best option for getting access to money for a down payment. You, you know, if, if that's your only choice to pay a lot of taxes and a penalty in order to get into that house, the, the conversation I would want to be having or want you having with your certified financial planner is what are my other options to figure out housing or to um, position assets differently so that we can get into this house without tapping into money that you said was for retirement, mm -hmm. right? This is long-term money that's trying to solve a maybe what feels like an urgent matter right now. Yeah, it's kind of tricky, James, because early could mean early as in taking it out before I actually planned on it, or early could mean early as defined by the IRS. Mm -hmm. So the IRS says, hey, if you retire in the year in which you turn 55, you can take your 401k money out and pay taxes on it, but you won't have the 10% penalty. So that it te that technically isn't early. Most people at 55 are not prepared to retire and start pulling money out of their 401k and have enough money to live longer than they did. Mm. So this is where I'd be very careful about how you do this, James. And again, we talked about this earlier, but I, I'd be careful about using re assets purposed for retirement to achieve a different purpose. And that might be the best thing that you could do. That might make sense. But I have seldom seen it where that that really makes the most sense usually if you're looking and co-creating with your certified financial planner there's a there's a better way and and you just have to figure that out Let, okay let's let's I, I don't have anything further to add there uh, i do james <laughs> so james you could get money out of the 401k possibly and and there aren't enough details but you could get money out of the 401k as a hardship to prevent eviction from your home it doesn't sound like you're in a home at this mm -hmm. point unless that's what you're referring to where you had to pay over five thousand dollars this year so the, i mean there are certain exceptions but again i'm 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 very leery of re of 
feeling like I'm backed into a corner, therefore I'm going to repurpose, I'm going to borrow from my future to solve a present problem. Well, especially, again, we're trying to interpret this question in a way of this $5,000 seems to be the the motivator for you. And if that was rent, you know, there, there's a lot of folks that feel as though if I'm renting somewhere, then I'm just pouring money down the drain. That's a phrase we often hear uh, as if renting is a bad thing always. And the, the reality is it could be very affordable housing, very safe housing. And if it's buying you an opportunity to get yourself into a stronger financial position where you're opening up possibilities for yourself in the future, renting can be a, a wonderful thing for you. Hmm. If, if you're renting for decades and never really taking advantage of uh, the no headaches, the no major emergencies that are going to pop up on you as, as a renter versus being a homeowner, um, if you're not building up an, a, an adequate emergency fund and a down payment and everything so that you could afford that house, then you know maybe renting becomes this perpetual almost loss. Like it, it's kind of you're stuck in a situation like that. But it doesn't have to be. If you're using your renting years to help better the future, um, just just don't undo all that goodness by rushing into that future and maybe feeling like you got to buy a house at a time when, you know, there's so, this is clearly a seller's market, not a buyer's market. And, um, you know, just feeling as though you're desperate because maybe you're losing, losing some dollars in one area. Um, homeowners definitely lose money at times too, right? When the water heater goes out and, yeah. and issues come up. Yeah, so. I'd be careful throwing good money after bad. I mean, the, what, if, what if the best thing you could do in your financial life is to lose that five grand? Maybe to lose that five grand every year. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, there's no way that, well, that actually could be the best thing. Mm -hmm. if, if you look at a number of stinky choices, that could be the least stinky. Mm. Um, let's, flip, uh, let's flip the script. You've got a, a, a situation where you've got your 401k, you're funding that. You've got your IRA. The cool, <laughs> cool people call it an IRA. And, uh, and you, you get your Roth IRA. And then you've got a different account a non-tax sheltered account, would you pull those dollars out as a down payment on the house? Possibly. If, if that's what the purpose of the money was. I would look and see how much gain do I have in that account? How is that gain going to be taxed? I, If I had some gain and I could... A lot of folks don't know that you can pay 0% on capital gains. Crazy. Um, and And you think, well, I didn't know that. Of course you didn't. You, I wouldn't expect you to know that. It doesn't even make any sense. Nothing about the tax code <laughs> makes any sense. Um, you're going to pay somewhere between 15 to 20, and if you are you know, at a, at a certain level, you're going to pay an extra 3.5%, and it could be going up to 47%. <laughs> so, I mean, nothing nothing makes sense right now in this upside-down world. It, but, but what you're describing, though, I mean, you said, hey, you've got retirement plans at work. Maybe you're funding an IRA and a Roth IRA. Those all have a specific purpose or a design to them, an intended use. You you also described having money in just mutual funds or, or some investment account that is a taxable account. The beauty of that type of an account is that you can use it for whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean don't have a purpose attached to the dollars. You just have freedom to structure this investment account. It could be uh, funding a down payment in the future for a house. It could be funding a wedding. It could be funding some awesome vacation in the future. Whatever it is, have a purpose for that money. And if, it's, if it has a different purpose in mind than buying a house, I, I would just caution you to too flippantly or too quickly just repurpose the money in your mind and use it for something else. Uh, it's hard for me to think of a a greater financial planning scenario. I, I mean, you've got dollars that tax-wise you've got some flexibility with, I mean, depending on capital gains, and you've got potentially competing financial goals. Buy a house, manage cash flow well, retire someday, Maybe some of that money you've always thought could be for emergencies or buying the next car or whatever. Wow. I mean, work with your certified financial planner. Map that out. I want to see, all right, where do you stand with retirement? Does this money, even if you've thought this money is for retirement, um, where do you stand with it? Mm -hmm. are, are, are you ahead? <clears throat> Maybe if you're ahead, these dollars can go towards the house. What if you're behind 
even including these dollars and you're behind. Oh my goodness, then it'd be disastrous to pull these dollars in to, to put on the house. F financial planning solves that and, and helps address that. So Yeah, because if I knew for sure I was behind, that totally reframes the conversation. Especially if there's if there's someone in in the decision making process, whether that's me or my spouse, that is very emotional about this. With a house, yes, that's easy to do. I mean, houses are so emotional. Yeah, they're, they're like like we've got to have that house. Yeah. We've got to get out of this house. Yeah. We've got to, got to, got to, got to. I'd say be careful. Yeah. All if, right. Hey, I, I want to uh, switch gears here. We're going to switch uh, gears to another question, uh, fan of the show, and I'm I'm going to surprise these guys. I'm jumping down, guys, to Daniel. Daniel emailed us a couple months ago. Hey, uh, hi, Corhorn. I'm Daniel. I'm currently investing 15% into my TSP account with a 5% match in the Marine Corps. Awesome. Daniel, thank you for your service. Uh, I was wondering if investing into Bitcoin was another good way to invest or if it was too risky. Ooh. Thoughts? I, Daniel, I would put all of your money that you can afford to lose into Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it might go to the moon. It might go Could, it, it, to you, the pavement, right? You just don't mm -hmm. know. It, I yeah. mean, you, I, you, you're, you're hearing lots of people that are saying Bitcoin... A hundred thousand by September of this year, Bitcoin, a million, and so you know, Daniel, you could start stacking satoshis, but here's the thing: if you need that money, and Elon Musk coughs, and the price of it goes down by thirteen percent, I mean that's what happened. Yeah, you know, just recently Elon Musk said, "Well, yeah." Tesla was going to accept Bitcoin so you could buy a Tesla and now we won't. And 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 Bitcoin dropped 13% just like that. Mm -hmm. Based on what? Nothing. Mm -hmm. So this is where I would say, Daniel, I would, I would be careful um, about how I would do this because I, I like, if you're going to stack, I'd stack in the TSP. Yeah. And I would challenge you, if you're in the Marine Corps, you got three hots and a cot, you got your clothing taken care of, you got your housing taken care of, you got your food taken care of, you can do a lot more than 15%. Uh, and I, yeah, Bitcoin for play money only. Yeah. It, it's hard to use the word invest when you're applying it to Bitcoin. It's, it's really a speculation that you believe the price is going to go up based on other buyers continuing to enter into the market. And to me, an investment is something that you can, you understand the risk, you can calculate what the potential return is, and you have a specific object, objective that it's trying to achieve for you. And when it's achieved, then the investment, you, you pull it back out. And it's hard for me to see that this meets those criteria. And we get questions um, multiple times a week about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I, I've got a whole show we're, we're cooking up. I, uh, to talk about it. Um, so much is, it's just moving so fast. And, um, but again, I mean, right now it's speculation. So thanks for the questions, uh, James and everyone and Daniel. That's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.